Welcome everyone to today's PBC Worship Experience. My name is Tina, I'm your host for today, and as always, it is such an honor to be here welcoming you from wherever you're tuning in from. Today marks the first Sunday of August, and so it marks a new month, a new beginning, and as we know at PBC, a new miracle to be uncovered by the Lord himself. Today is no different. We are going to have something amazing in store for us at today's word. We are so thankful to the Holy Spirit for continuing to channel such incredible, incredible timely messages through our church week after week. And so let us steady our hearts, let's sharpen our minds, sharpen our focus as we head into today's first session of prayer and worship. Amen. Let's begin to thank the Lord. Let's begin to worship His holy name. Let's begin to adore Him because He's worthy. Let's exalt His holy name. Let's thank Him for yet another opportunity to be in His presence and serve Him. Father, I will say thank you. Lord, we exalt you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We say thank you. We say thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We say thank you. We exalt your holy name because you are good and your mercy is forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The psalm is saying, Psalm 7, verse 19, 17, sorry, and it says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praises to the name of the Lord Most High. Let's begin to sing praises to his name because 
because he is deserving he deserves our worship he deserves our praises he deserves our thanksgiving for he alone has done for us what no man can do he has done so very much for us let's begin to adore him worship him from the depth of your soul worship him from your spirit from your spirit father we say thank you lord we adore you we thank you for your church we thank you for the people we thank you for each and every one of us for the people gathered here from all around the world we say thank you we say thank you for yet another opportunity to stand in your presence and save you we say thank you for the david said i rejoice when i heard him say let us go into the house of the lord father we are grateful we are glad that we are in your presence this morning this afternoon this evening we are grateful lord we say thank you we say thank you jesus be thou exalted be thou exalted glorious god be thou exalted ancient of days thank you thank you for perfect alignment thank you we've seen everything aligned we've seen everything work out perfectly for us according to your order we've seen your hand upon us um, for we've been marvelously helped as a church we've been marvelously helped as a people we say thank you we say thank you for all the miracles the testimonies that flows from this altar we say thank you for you not left us alone thank you thank you jesus thank you for being so mindful of us be thou exalted thank you jesus the bible said in psalm 95 verse 2 for his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms are you making a joyful noise unto the lord tonight are you giving him thanks are you giving him thanks lord we thank you we lift our hands in worship we lift our hands in thanksgiving we lift our hands oh lord because you are deserving of it all oh be thou exalted malo kashayida barosa be thou exalted king of kings be thou exalted the only true God, be thou exalted, I am the Rayam, be thou exalted, the one who carries us in his palms day in, day out, be thou exalted, the covenant keeping God. We thank you, we thank you for keeping your covenant with us here on this altar. We thank you, Mano Shekali Adabadosha, for your presence is evidence in our midst. We say thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for our pastor, Pastor Dami. Thank you for his family and every steward every ministers on this altar we say thank you we say thank you thank you jesus ah, thank you for sound mind thank you for sound doctrines ah, we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you lord be thou exalted oh lord in the mighty name of jesus we give thanks amen we are still praying we are going to be asking the lord for mercy the bible said let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need according to the word of god in hebrew 4 verse 16 let's begin to ask the lord for mercy lord we come before you in this this moment asking for mercy we come before you oh lord asking for mercy we've come that we may find grace to carry us throughout today's service we've come oh lord we ask for the grace We've come to obtain the grace to see your truth in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we ask that you create in us a clean heart. Uh, create in us a clean heart. Uh, purify our heart, oh Lord. Uh, make us ready and able, accepting, oh Lord but of receiving from you oh lord cleanse us purify our hearts oh lord and create in us a clean heart oh lord in the name of jesus and lord we ask that you cast us not away from your presence we cast us not away oh lord as we have come this day cast us not away from your presence oh lord and take not your holy spirit from us in the name of jesus and lord oh lord today we ask that you restore restore to us, O oh Lord, the joy that comes from your salvation and renew the right spirit within us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, to pray. We are going to be praying for today's service that the spirit of God will move and take over, that the spirit of the Lord will take over because we cannot do today on our own because it's not of Him that we let, it's not by our own strength. We cannot go through, through today's service on our own strength. Therefore, we ask the Holy Spirit to take over. 
The Bible said in Genesis, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Let's begin to ask the Lord to take over. Let the Spirit of the Lord begin to hover around. Let it begin to move around. Let it begin to move around. Let it take over. Let it take over. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you take over. We welcome you in our midst. We welcome you in our midst. Ah, come and take over. Come and take preeminence. A cano shetali yada baruz de kai nanada. Take over, take over, take over today's service. Ah, for we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own, Lord Lord. We cannot sit here on our own without your help. Father, we ask that you take over spirits. Take over, take over. Mano shekata yada badosha. Ela seta ina nuze kali yada barosa. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you fill us in as you take over begin to fill us in we are hungry and text for you oh lord we are hungry we are hungry we've come because we are hungry for the bible said that you have not called the seed of jacob to seek you in vain we have come to sit at thy feet because we want to receive from you we want to receive we are hungry for you oh lord we are hungry the bible said in isaiah 51 verse 1 is anyone texty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come. Come, take your choice of wine or milk and drink. Uh, Lord, we ask that you fill us up. Uh, we ask that you fill us up. For the spirit, Bible said the spirit says, Come, come, come and drink. Uh, we come, oh Lord, that you will fill us. Uh, we come that you will satisfy us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray for insatiable hunger, oh Lord, today. Uh, we want the fullness of you. We want the fullness of you today. In the name of Jesus, uh, the fullness that you have made available for us, oh Lord, today we want. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, do not leave us empty handed. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said in Acts 19, the strength in Tayanaba, and it says, So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. We are going to be praying for today's word. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the word will find expression in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, it will grow in us. The word of the Lord will grow in us. In the name of Jesus, that your word will be delivered according to your glory. In the name of Jesus, who come against every word of man, we ask that you, you O Lord, be true and let every man a lie. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, have your way, that your word will find expression in our heart, that the hungry will be filled, that you will quench every taste. In the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, I want us to pray for hunger with Jesus. Jesus adds to it two verse six and it says now when this was noise that brought the multitude came together and we are confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language we are going to be praying that the Lord will sound the noise of anger with Jesus New York all around the city of New York all around the United States that the Lord will announce it let the noise be sound let the sound let the sound of revival go up let it go up. let the Lord announce it himself in the name of Jesus Father announce this revival yourself announce it yourself for if you do not announce it yourself in vain do we Lord I will ask that you will sound the noise of hunger with Jesus all around the city of New York oh let the sound go up let the sound go up that everyone will hear let the sound go up in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Father thank you Lord Jesus oh be that we salted be that we salted be that we salted today have your way Lord have your way in today's service to the glory of your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, Abba. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, it's Thanksgiving time. Hey. Tell your neighbor, Jesus. To be lifted high, only you deserve. 
Then you give the Lord a special dance. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three, go!
oh father thank you thank you thank you thank you lord thank you jesus oh thank you jesus thank you blessed redeemer we give you praise we thank you we bless your holy name Hallowed be thy name oh god thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace thank you for your faithfulness lord we thank you we thank you we thank you can you lift up your voice and just begin to thank the king of kings the lord of lords the almighty the bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord oh and to sing that praise is almost high can you continue in thanksgiving on this sunday the first sunday in the month of august the eighth month in this year 2024 can you lift up your voice and thank him thank him thank him thank him the bible says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer supplication with thanksgiving it says make your request known unto the lord can we thank him thank him for his goodness thank him for his mercy thank him for his faithfulness thank him for his favor upon our lives thank him for his church thank him for how far he has brought us father we thank you we come into your presence with thanksgiving we say hallowed be thy name oh god thank you father for your mercy thank you for your grace Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Lord, we say thank you. We are grateful for your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Eb Abba Father. Ebenezer, we thank you. Thank you. Either to you have brought us. Thus far, you have brought your church. Thus far, you have brought your people. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord. Like that one leper, we come back to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ebenezer. We give you all the praise. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be thou exalted, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. This Sunday, beautiful Sunday, um, we're going to be, um, by help of the Holy Spirit, um, I'll be leading prayers on faith that moves mountain. Faith that moves mountain. Hallelujah. Faith that moves mountain. In the book of Mark, Mark 11, um, from verse 12, the Bible says that Jesus was, it was, it was at Bethany and he, he saw a fig tree and he wanted to take fruit out of the fig tree. And he said there was no, the Bible says that there was no fruit there, only leaves. And Jesus cut the fig tree and he, he went on his way. The Bible says the next day in verse, in the in verse 20, 22, the next day, Peter was the one that saw the fig tree and he called Jesus' attention to it and said, look at the fig tree that you cost. <laughs> and Jesus says, have faith in God. Allah. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Peter was surprised. He was surprised that what? You caused this fig tree yesterday. And I'm sure when he did it, no one, they didn't take, they didn't really pay attention to it. He just did it. And the other disciples did not pay attention. But they come back. And Peter, <laughs> the, the usual Peter, he, he wanted to check if, and confirm if what the Lord said. He wanted to remind Jesus that <laughs> the, the tree that you caused yesterday nothing has changed oh but to the surprise of peter he was surprised when he saw it and said wow this fig tree as that you cost yesterday has dried up wow and jesus said unto him have faith in god he says very yeah, i say unto you whatsoever you shall say that whatsoever you 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 say and you believe he says it shall be done unto you I mean, that's me paraphrasing it. it says whatsoever you ask for whatever you pray for it says it shall be you shall receive it he says you can even speak to this mountain you not only do this but if you speak to mountain and say be thou move from this place and be thou cast away it says it shall be done unto you it shall be done unto you he says whatsoever you ask in prayer believing believing all things whatsoever you ask in prayer it says believing it shall be done unto you faith that moves mountain faith that moves mountain have faith in god have faith in god have faith in god and this morning this afternoon wherever you're joining from i want you to believe god for something i want you to 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 your faith to be strengthened bank on the word of god let your faith be on the word of god on the faithfulness of god let your attention be gazed on that on the on the promises of god on what god has done before if he has done it before he will do it again that's why jesus 
says have faith in god it says in in, in john 14 john 14 verse 1 it says let not you have be troubled it says believe in god believe also in me believe in god even if and, and where the, the, they were saying that believe in god because i've come to tell you about god but if by any chance if for any reason you say oh you, you cannot see god physically believe in me i'm here with you i am the word that has become flesh believe in me believe in me kaya believe in me believe in god believe also in me can you can you bank your faith on the word of god today as he done it before as he brought you from january until this day he will do it for you he will do it for you isaiah isaiah says beyond i will do a new thing and it shall spring forth if god is doing a new thing in your life today but the only thing you need to do is believe have faith in him have faith in him i have faith in this god have faith i think it was mark mark 5 where the 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 the, uh, the lady that suffered um the issue of blood for 12 years she said if i can only but touch the helm of his garment if i can only but touch and the bible says there were many people around jesus down that day there were many people that just came and they were they were you know they were they were around him and they were touching and the, their body was touching him but there was a woman that came she came with faith that if i can only touch the helm of his garment and when she did jesus felt it that something has left him her faith drew something out of jesus yeah her faith drew the power from 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 jesus and jesus said so i felt that something left me who taught me who taught me here who taught me somebody has taught me with your faith can you touch jesus with your faith today can you touch jesus with your faith today can you come with an expectation and say lord lord this mountain in my faith this mountain oh god i have that faith i have that faith that you can move this mountain can you begin to pray one of the very ways to strengthen your faith is in prayer is in speaking the word of god banking upon the word of god banking upon the word of god that even when you are spoken and you still see that mountain you are looking and you're saying it is gone already you are speaking the word of god you are speaking the word of god the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight can you speak the word of god to every situation in your life today as you begin to do and you back and stand upon that word those mountains will move can you open your mouth and begin to pray lord every mountain of god that has fallen me can you begin to move those mountains? Begin to declare. It says, as you have said into my ears, so soon will I do unto you. Can you begin to speak to these mountains? Begin to speak to the mountains. It says, whatsoever you ask, I believe him. It says, it shall be done for you. All things that you might ask for. All things. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 22. It says, all things. I think it's 22 or 23. It says that all things that you, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe in all things, what all things, everything, if no matter what it is, though it tarry, though it, it might look like it's tarry, but the Lord says it is done already. Can you begin to speak the word of God into a whatever situation? Begin to speak the word of God, begin to speak the word of God, begin to declare that it is done, it is done. That mountain you are moved in the mighty name of Jesus, the mountain of sickness, the mountain of Bariness, the mountain of joblessness, the mountain of poverty. I declare, I speak to you upon the word of God, according to the word of God, according to the word of God, according to the word of God, that you are moved in the mighty name of Jesus. That according to the word that says, whatsoever has come out from my mouth, he says that the son shall the word be that has come out from my mouth. He says it shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that which I have spoken, that which I, which I, which my purpose for for, for what what I've said that word for shall be accomplished. The word of God will not come back to God in void. Can you begin to bank upon the word of God? Can you begin to declare? Father, I declare over every mountain in my life, over every mountain in my brothers and sisters on this altar, everyone listening to me today, Lord, we declare by the word of God because we stand believing, we stand believing, we agree in faith, we agree according to your word that those mountains are moved in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Shagatebalakara. Those mountains are moved in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In that book of Mark, it says all things that you shall ask for in prayer, believing, 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 believing. It says it shall be done for you. It is done. It is done. In the mighty name of Jesus, just continue to stand upon the word of God. Even though that mountain is still looking at you in the face, don't focus on the mountain. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. And before you know it, those mountains are moved. Focus on Jesus. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. It says, looking up to Jesus. Looking up to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Aya. Looking up to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, who for the joy that was set before him. It says, for the joy that was said before him. Oh, shakata balakada. Can you begin to declare, Lord, I look up to you. Lord, I look up to you. Lord, I look up to you. Oh, Father, I look up to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I look up to you. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, for the joy that was said before him, endure the cross, despise the shame, and was set down at the, he was set at the right hand of God. God the Father, can you begin to declare, I look up to Jesus. I would not look at the mountain. The mountain is moved already. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be unto your name. Be thou exalted, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. I will bless. Thank you very much, everyone, for, for praying with us today. Enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. What's your Words of hope give us strength, help us go in this world where we roam. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Welcome to the month of August. Welcome to the month of August. In this broad season of perfect alignment, I am grateful to God for your life because indeed it's a new beginning for you. Oh yes, there is no doubt about that. It is a new beginning for you. Can I declare that it's a new beginning of grace, of glory, of peace, of righteousness, of increased consecration, of the, the love and the passion for the things of God, of dimensions of favor you've never experienced before, of multiplication, of increase, of rest. It's a new beginning of great exploits in the name of Jesus Christ. We are confident of great things that will be spoken of thee. Hmm. In the name of Jesus. So welcome to the month of August. It's the eighth month of this year, 2024. The Lord has been gracious to us. The Lord has been kind to us. And God's agenda continues to move through. Guess what? This is the second month in PBC's third year. This is the second month in PBC's third year. We're moving. And the Lord is moving with us. As I'm sure you know, throughout the month of July, Lord was teaching us in a very dense manner on the topic, the model church. It's a brand new series and it's a series that will carry on through the vast majority of this 2024 second half 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We spent the entire month of July literally on only one chapter, chapter one. That's how loaded and dense the word of God is. Incredible. We literally spent the entire month of July, four Sundays on one chapter, just one chapter. And even at that, we did not even fully, you know, go as deep as we could have gone. By the grace of God, today is part five of the exact same series on the model church. And we're going to be going into chapter two of the book of Acts. And you can say the subtopic of this particular part five. <laughs> hey, is the Holy Ghost factor. Mm. Or you can say the Holy Spirit, the game changer. The Holy Spirit, the game changer in any perfectly aligned model church. Any church that is not operating as by the workings, plural, of the Holy Spirit is not a model church. And it's a church that it would never truly be perfectly aligned to the standards and the express exactitude of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the game changer. He is the game changer. I want to remind you that I concluded last week by telling you that after they had prayed, the church was good in prayer. They still had to cast lots to find the replacement of Matthias. You would never find in the Holy Scriptures any other part of the Bible after Acts chapter 2 where people spoke about casting lots. In the Old Testament, lots were cast to make very, very important decisions. Even in the New Testament, we still see that after they had prayed, they had to cast lots. Do we go with justice? or which is Basabas, or do we go with Matthias? Who do we go with? Who do we go with? Who do we go with? Do we go with uh, Basabas, Justus, or do we go with Matthias? And to make that decision, they had to cast lots because the game changer had not yet arrived in dwelling in the lives of the believers. The Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, had not yet fully arrived. The day of Pentecost had not yet fully come. Emphasis on the word fully. So they were still make doing, if you want to. They were still, you know, just make shift. Let's just, let's figure out what we can do. Pending when the real game changer shows up. Who is the real game changer? It's the Holy Spirit. You would never find any part of scripture after Acts chapter 2, which is the arrival of the Holy Ghost, where the lots were cast. The last time you will find in scripture that lots were cast was when the decision of either Matthias or Barsabbas Justus was about to be made. And that's the last action that was taken in recorded scripture before the arrival of the game changer. The moment the Holy Spirit showed up, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, till today, Christians never have to cast lots to make decisions. Why? We have the very, very spirit of truth in us and he will guide us into all truth. So, on that account and on that premise, let us pray. <laughs> Father, I thank you because you're a good God. I thank you because you're the very revealer mm, of eternal things to come. I thank you because your spirit is the spirit of truth and we know he will guide us into all truth today. Thank you for your courage in this inspired teaching series so far in the year three of your church. Thank you for how you are doing specific dealings with us both as a collective as well as individually. Only you have that kind of incredible dynamic where you can meet with people as a body and as individuals thank you for speaking to me and to us 
Thank you for a now word. Thank you for the model and the template you have set as the husbandman of the church. Thank you for your spirit that powers your church. Thank you for the perfect alignment we enjoy even in our season right now unendingly. Holy Spirit, please, please just show us the way. Let the word of God bellow forth from my lips into the ears of your people. Grant me speaking grace. Grant your people listening grace, not just hearing grace, but listening grace, the grace that would make them listen and take heed and follow and, 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 and navigate the complexities of this thing called life. I pray that you please help us. Do this, O God, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Acts chapter number 2, I read the word of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Journey with me. Journey with me. Holy Ghost, the game changer. The Holy Spirit, the game changer. That's the, the subtopic of this on the model church. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. KJV. Hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost, as you can tell, has the word pent there, which means it has something to do with the multiple of five. Pentagon, five-sided figure, right? The Pentateuch, right? The five books. Penta, Penta, Penta. Show me anything that has to do with Penta. I will show you something that has to do with five. So what exactly is Pentecost? Pentecost is the 50th day following Passover. And it's amazing because Pentecost is literally a mark of a new beginning. Is it a coincidence that we are literally in this month of new beginnings going into what Pentecost really means because it is the first day after seven seasons of perfected order. Yes, seven is the biblical symbol of perfection. Seven times seven is 49 and the number after 49 is 50. So literally, the Pentecost represents the first new day after seven seasons of unending perfection. Here we are smack in the middle of our season of unending perfect alignment god is carrying his church bbc through an inspired teaching series on the model church we are going through the month of august and we are starting with the second chapter of the book of acts that signified the new beginning after seven seasons of perfected order we just wrapped up the month of july the seventh month of the year and we're kicking up the month of August. Pentecost is literally the day that comes after seven seasons of perfection. Seven times seven is 49. Incredible. You cannot make this off. You just simply cannot make this stuff up. God is in the midst of his people. And the shout of the king is amongst us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully... You need to make that bold. I'm sure the media team is going to do that. Make it bold and in big font. Fully. May your day of glory fully come. Your day of glory for some of you is still loading. Can I pray that your day of glory will fully come? There is such a thing as fully. The day had been baking in number one, number two, number three, number four, number 46, number 47, day number 48, day number 49, day number 50. The day was fully loaded. Pentecost had fully come. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, come on, they were all with one accord and in one place. The model church is a church that must have continued in steadfast prayer, waiting on the promise of the Father aka the game changer aka the holy spirit the modern church must be a church that is in one accord in one place in terms of spiritual location 
in one accord and in one place. You must be in the same spiritual geolocation. Adam, Adam, where art thou? Of course, God was not asking him about his physical location because God knows where Adam was. Of course, Adam was behind the leaves and God knows all things. So clearly, God was not asking him about a physical location. Adam, Adam, where are you? God was saying, where are you, Adam, in your spiritual uh, geolocation? You are not where I placed you spiritually. Adam, Adam, what has happened? You have been dislocated. Can I pray for you? Everyone in this church, PVC, globally, all members, all viewers, all vast number of you listening to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, where you have suffered spiritual dislocation, God will bring you back into alignment. In the name of Jesus, you will be now in accordance and in alignment with the spirit of grace. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, because time and chance happens to them all, they were all with one accord. Accordance is critical for a model church. And in one place. Mm. Verse 2. And suddenly, somebody type suddenly, suddenly. Somebody type suddenly in the chat box. Just, just put suddenly. Let, let it continue to trend. That's, that's a place to, to, to just pause for a second. Because the move of God in any model church happens so suddenly. You don't see it coming. One moment you think you got it all figured out and then the Holy Spirit just moves us to a new realm. So put suddenly, suddenly, oh, suddenly, suddenly. And God helped the people of PBC suddenly. And God helped uh, the prevailing and the borderless church marvelously in a sudden way, manner. And the Lord helped uh, his people suddenly. And the Lord blessed us suddenly. And the Lord lifted us suddenly. And the Lord visited you suddenly. And the Lord turned around your situation suddenly. And the Lord sent the Spirit of grace to impact your life suddenly. Suddenly, 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 and suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. Where there is a perfect alignment and the spirit of grace is introduced in that model church, the move of God will be as a rushing mighty wind. Wind after wind blowing. Our Father and the Lord, the set man about this commission, RCCG globally, has said, this is a year of the wind. Can I pray that the sudden, glorious, rushing mighty wind of the spirit will blow PBC, NSN, and hang out with Jesus into our desired space in the name of Jesus Christ spiritually and in other capacities amen and suddenly there came a sound from heaven the model church must be a church where every sound that emanates from the worship team from the prayer team from the pastorate from the ministers it must be a sound from heaven it must be a sound from heaven. There came a sound from heaven. The sounds you are cooking, are they sounds from heaven or are they sounds from strange fire? The mortal church must be a church that is aligned to the sounds and the frequencies of Zion. There came a sound from heaven. You know what a sound from heaven sounds like? Because once it hits your spirit, man, there is a confirmation and it registers within. There's a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting my god my god my god and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them i'm going to stop in verse three i'm going to pick up from verse four next week let me just focus on verse three there appeared unto them the modern church that is in perfect alignment must begin to experience the appearance and the very presence of the one who is the spirit of fire the bible says that i i baptize you with water john the baptist speaking but one is coming the husband of the church he will not baptize you with water he will baptize you with the holy ghost and fire you 
cannot tell me you're a model church in perfect alignment if there is no fire in your bones. Sleepy members, sleepy workers, sleepy ministers, sleepy choir members, sleepy prayer warriors. In fact, how can you walk while, while you're sleeping? Sleepy ministers, sleepy pastors, sleepy members, and you claim you're a model church. No, you're not. You're a church. You just need to be aligned in a more perfect manner. One of the hallmarks of the New Testament early church, which is the template we're using to study this entire model church teaching series, is that it was a church that was modeled after fire. They were made in the very cocoons and in the, in the furnace of fire. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Fire marks a new dispensation. Show me fire in scripture. I will show you a new dispensation. The call of Moses was preceded by fire. When God was about to make a distinction between his prophetic voice and authority, Elijah, and the prophets of Baal, that contest was determined by fire. Yes, show me the three Hebrew boys. When there was about to be a change in righteous legislature and by the shift of the dispensations of Babylon, that was contested by fire. When Isaiah will have a shift in his calling from just random prophecies to now prophesying with accuracy and accuracy as per the Lord Jesus Christ, his lips had to be cleansed with coals of fire. Show me fire! I will show you a new dispensation. The modern church must be a church where the members, the workers, the ministers are they are baptized with the heavy, heavy dose of the fire of grace no fire you will have all kinds of ants perching on the light i've never seen a place where a cockroach or a roach or our rodents are perching or doing all kinds of silly things in a hot furnace it doesn't work everyone has regard for fire including madmen including the insane madmen don't they're not that mad no one walks into fire the devil respects a church that is on fire the devil respects a vessel that is on fire the devil respects ministers that are on fire the devil respects a people that are on fire and it's sat upon their head. Can I pray for you, even as I begin to bring this to a close, that the Lord Jesus Christ, through his spirit, will sit upon you as of fire. Your whole body will be flooded with light. Your spirit man will be engulfed with burning flames of the fire of God so that he can begin to legislate the very mandate of your calling. And begin to carry out the governments of Yeshua here on earth. The kingdom of God cannot come on earth until a people rise. After having been siphoned through the cloven tongues of fire. Is your Christian work sleepy and docile? I'm speaking to you. This message is from God to you. You need to cry to God, revive me. Baptize me with fire. Let there be a mark of distinction that Jesus indeed is burning in this one. Haya. <laughs> show me a woman of fire regardless of the nation. I will show you a man that oh, will command mighty exploits. I will show you a woman that will shake her world on her generation. Mm -hmm. But there can be no fire without the Holy Spirit. And there can be no Holy Spirit without salvation. You have to first receive the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. His name is Jesus the Christ. So are you listening to me and wondering what is all this talk about fire about? It simply means that it is the fuel that powers the Christian man in fervency and continuity with longevity. Hmm. But you have to first receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you do not know Jesus Christ and you're listening to me, it will be a singular privilege to introduce you to him he really will be just say after me Lord Jesus I thank you for your word I thank you because you are very intentional about me you found me out in spite of all the things I could be watching on this Sunday you linked me into this space here right now and in this moment I see the error of my ways I confess that I am a sinner and that my ways are not right with you. And so therefore, Lord, I repent of my sins and I forsake my old ways. 
I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he came in the flesh for my sins, that he died a sinner's death. I receive him in my heart and I confess that he is both Lord and Savior over me. Teach me the way to go. Show me the way everlasting. Plant your spirit in me. Let my life now be defined by fire. <laughs> Write my name in the book of life and please never let me go. I believe I am saved to the glory of your name. If you said that short prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Every privilege and every dividend. As per what Jesus Christ died on the cross for, it accrues to you instantly because of the confessions of your mouth. Because by your words you are justified, even as by the words of others they are condemned. Can I just in introduce you to an, an, an avenue where you can actually let this linger? There is a link right now in the chat box. Click on it. It will take you straight to a form. It's going to take you 30 seconds, literally 30 seconds. Very short. Fill out that form. We will keep all of your information confidential. We will treat it with all of the data privacy laws which we follow as a church legally. We will bring you into a private discipleship academy where you can begin to grow in the ways of the Lord. There your fire uh, will be ignited with other fires. Because as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man's friend. Welcome to life. God bless you and God keep you. Next week, by the grace of God, we're going to continue from verse 4. And you will see that fire has results and has implications in the lives of members of the model church. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Yet another timely message from the Lord himself. That was amazing. I think it really put into perspective how a model church can only be viable really through the Holy Spirit itself. The presence of the Holy Spirit is the presence of joy, of love. It really just signifies the presence of God himself. And without that, what is a church? And so I hope that you're feeling as blessed as I am from this message and from all of our pre previous messages week after week. As always, you can go back on our YouTube channel, on our playlist tab, and re-watch any service, any sermon, any session from the beginning of PBC's inception, back two years ago, to today, to this uh, video that is going to be put up on our playlist tab as well. And so I hope this is definitely one service, one sermon that you will be listening to on repeat. And so to express our gratitude to God for such a timely message, let us move cheerfully into our next session of Tithes and Offerings. We've never seen before. Yeah, move like we've never seen before. Say, Holy Spirit, send down your rain. Lord, you said in your word that we will do greater work. We want it now. When do we want it? We want it now. Oh, yeah. Lord, now honor your word. Pour your spirit out on us. We want it now. Right here, right now. Hey. Holy Spirit,
like we've never seen before. More like we've never seen before. More like we've never seen before. According to your promises in the scriptures, according to the prophecies that we believe, you say move. Friends, this ends our PBC worship experience for this Sunday, but I do have a couple of announcements before you leave just yet. First and foremost, what's happening today, right after this YouTube service ends, is our communion, our monthly communion, which happens over on Zoom. The details will be shared on the screen and in the box shortly. Uh, secondly, this coming week, uh, Monday through Friday, is going to be the annual convention, the annual global convention for the church in Nigeria, in Lagos. And so if you're on the ground, we highly, highly encourage you to be participating in the events. But if you can't be there physically, virtually, we will be posting a lot of content on our YouTube channel in the coming week. And so we really want you to be a part of that. We want you to be participating, even if you can't be there on the ground. And so please do tune in to our services that are going to be posted throughout the week. And finally, I'm sure that everybody who tunes in on a regular basis knows about what's going on on September 14th, but that is going to be our new Hangout with Jesus revival based in New York City. So we are so excited for this event that's coming up. It's fast approaching. It's going to be in New York. It's going to be huge. We're going to have a lot of people coming out to that revival and a lot of lives touched. And so we are forever indebted to all of our church members, we always, always, always say three things when it comes to any kind of Hangout with Jesus revival. Those are the three Ps. The first one is to pray, to pray along with us, to pray for us, to pray for the success of this revival, and to pray for the people whose lives are going to be transformed at this revival. Secondly, we have our partnering. If you are able to, we would be extremely, extremely indebted to be receiving donations from you for the success of this revival. It is a massive event with incredible operations and logistics going on behind the scenes. And so your funds are going to support this event and making it a huge success. And third and last but not least, our posting. Posting on social media, telling people in your life what's going on, these things cannot be understated. We need to make sure that anybody who's anybody in the tri-state area knows about this Hangout with Jesus revival. We want to get people into the stadium. We want people to be tuning in live. We want to have as big of an outreach as we can. And that all depends on how you are posting about this event. So as always, the three Ps to partner, to post, and to pray for us. We will leave you with that. This was PVC 
worship experience for this Sunday. We hope you stay blessed into the next week. See you on Sunday. Hallelujah.